In this video, we're going to talk about surjective and injective functions, and we'll do some proofs. So if you're doing a proof-heavy linear algebra course, this video is going to be very important, so I'll try to explain this as simply as I possibly can. So what is a surjective function? Uh, you might see this as the word on two, either or, they both mean the same thing, but we say that a transformation or a map t from rn to rm is surjective if each vector b in rm is the image of at least one vector x in rn. There's a bunch of words, uh, let's draw a picture and I'll explain it this way, because pictures are much better than words. Okay, so we have these spaces. We have the space rn and the space rm, and we have a function t that takes vectors in rn and puts them into rm. Okay, so if we take a vector x, then we can map it to some vector b. And we call this the transformation on x, and this is equal to b. So in this case, we say that b is the image of x, because we put x in as an input, and the output is b. The output is called the image. So this right here, that's the image. Okay, so it's surjective if every b, so this whole space, all of the matrix, all of the vectors in this space are the image of at least one x in Rn. So this means that every single vector in Rm can be achieved or can be computed using the transformation on some vector in Rn. So we can take y and it'll map somewhere in the space and we'll say, okay, t of y is equal to say c. So every single vector in Rm can be achieved through transformations from vectors in Rn. And this is says at least. So we could have another vector, say z, that also maps to b and that is perfectly okay. But everything in Rm has to be covered. So that's surjective. Injective, or these are also called one-to-one -one functions. A map t from rn to rm is injective if each vector b in rm is the image of at most one x in rn. So again, we can draw our little picture here. So this is rn, this is rm at most. So what does that most mean? Let's say we have some vector b, this is a transformation. And if we have two vectors x and y, let's make this a little bit more clear, then if x maps to b, then y cannot map to b. So basically what we're saying here is that each transformation is unique. If you take a unique vector in Rn, you're going to get a unique vector in Rm. So, here's the question. Does all of Rm have to be covered in this case? And the answer is no. So you could have just a section of Rm that's being covered. So, for instance, let's take the real numbers for a second here. Let's say I have this set containing the number 1 and the number 2, and I take some function of it, and I have the numbers 1, 2, and 3 here, and we just take every number and we map it to itself. So 1 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 2. This is injective, because 1 goes to 1, and 2 does not go to 1. 2 goes to something unique. But this 3 isn't mapped, so it's not surjective, but it is injective. Okay, so this is what injective means. Another way of thinking of injective is that if we have two transformations equal to each other, so let's say t of x is equal to t of y, then we can conclude that x is equal to y. That's another way of saying that, okay, let's say, for instance, um, we draw another picture. So we have, in this case, Let's get a nicer circle there. Let's say we have this vector tx in here and this vector ty in here, but they're both the same vector, then that means that if we have a vector x and a vector y, 
that they must also be the same. Okay, so that's injective. So if I give you a matrix, I can ask you, is the matrix injective or surjective? And it's kind of a weird question because, well, we talk about maps, so we should be talking about transformations, and really there should be a vector there too, but I'm just going to take a look at the matrix here. And we know that T of X is equal to A of X for some matrix, so we're just going to deal with the matrix itself. So here's the first question, is it surjective? So what this means is that uh, we can get every vector in, well, this is an M by N matrix, so we can get every vector in R2. Okay, so how can we check? A uh, good way to check here, is there a pivot position in each row? And the answer is yes. There's one here, and there's one here. So it is surjective. So what this means is that every vector, so let's say we want to get the vector 2, 1 out of it. There is some solution. Okay. What about injective? Well, what this means is that a combination has to be unique. So if it's injective, then we ha can't have any free variables. But what do we see here? We see this free variable here, x4. So there is a free variable, so it's not injective. Because remember, our inputs have to be unique. So our unique input has to give a unique output. But if we have a free variable, then say we could have, um, if we take a1 plus a2, this might give us, uh, this is kind of a weird way to put it. Uh, yeah, so let's just say, okay, we have a1 plus a2, and this gives us some vector b. Then we could also have, say for instance, 3a1 minus 2a2 somehow, and get the same vector b. So that is not injective. Of course, this example doesn't correspond directly, but theoretically, this is what could happen. Okay, so examples, let's do some proofs. Here's a theorem. We're gonna let T from Rn to Rm be a linear transformation, and we say T is injective if T of X equals zero has only the trivial solution. So again, this is just saying that there are no free variables. Okay, so here's a proof. Well, T is linear because it is a linear transformation. So what does this mean? What do we know from our properties? We know that T of zero is equal to zero. This is uh, because it is linear. Okay, so T of X is equal to zero. has the solution when x is equal to zero. Okay, so that part's done. So now we have to show that if we pick any other vector, then we're not going to get zero. So what do we know? T is injective if Tx is equal to zero. So we're gonna prove in the right direction. We're gonna say, okay, suppose T is injective. So T is injective, that's our assumption. Then what do we know? Then TX equals zero has exactly one solution. And of course, this is just by the definition. We say that, okay, so if TY is equal to TX, then X is equal to y. So if we put in, say, some ty and we get t0, so that's the same thing, right? So we're saying that ty is equal to 0 and t0 is equal to 0, but then this means that y is then equal to 0. So this direction is pretty trivial. 
but the other way around, it's a little bit more involved. So in this case, we say, okay, let's assume that t of x equals zero has only the trivial solution. And now we need to prove that it's injective. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to assume that it's not injective. So what this means is that we have, say, some vector t of u is equal to b and t of v is equal to b. Okay, so what are we saying now? Let's take the difference of u and v. So t is linear, so we can say, okay, let's take t of u minus v. And because t is linear, we know this is the same thing as saying, okay, this is t of u minus t of v. And this is equal to, well, t of u is equal to b, and t of v is equal to b. Therefore, t of u minus v is equal to zero. But here's the thing u minus v is not equal to zero. Okay, and why is that? Well, that's because we're saying, okay, this tu and this tv, they're two different vectors. So u is not equal to v. So this equation, tx is equal to zero, has more than one solution. Okay, so in this case, we have proven that if it is injective, it has exactly one solution. And if it's not injective, then it has more than one solution. And this is saying that if there's exactly one solution, then it's injective. So this sort of is what we're going to prove. So this, that's what we wanted to prove. So we took the contrapositive of the first direction. So if you didn't quite understand what I did there or why this proof works, um, I don't like plugging my own videos during these tutorials because I think everything should be able to learn in the course of the series. But uh, you should check out the proof videos in my discrete math series. So that should teach you about that. So if you have a, uh, do a quick interlude here say p if q, you have to show p if q and q if p, or you can say p if q and not p if not q. And that's the same thing. That's exactly what we did. Okay, carrying on. One more theorem. That's going to be the end of this. So we're going to let t from rn to rm be a linear transformation and a be a matrix for t. So we know that the transformation of x is equal to a matrix times a vector x. Okay, that's good. Uh, so we say t is surjective if the columns of a span r, and t is injective if the columns of a are linearly independent. Okay, so proof of one. t is surjective if the columns of a span r m. So what do we know about the columns of A spanning RM? If the columns of A span RM, then that means that AX is equal to B is consistent. And it's consistent for all B. So if AX equals B is consistent for, our, for all b, then that means that tx equals b has at least one solution. And therefore, it is surjective. So we're good. I'm not going to do both directions because these are equivalent statements. So we can go back and forth in the same direction. So the columns of A span Rm is the same thing as saying that, okay, every B has a solution. And that's the same thing as saying that every transformation has a solution. Okay, so proof of one, pretty straightforward. Proof of two, 
T is injective if the columns of A are linearly independent. Okay, so what do we know? We know that Tx is equal to zero and Ax is equal to zero are the same. So this is an important notion to remember. So what does this mean? Let's, let's talk about injectivity. So injectivity means that if Tx is equal to zero and Ty is equal to zero, then X is equal to Y. So this means that T of X is equal to zero can only have the trivial solution. So remember this from the previous theorem. So we're saying Tx is equal to zero has only the trivial solution. We just proved that. Okay, so that means that Ax is equal to zero has only the trivial solution. And what does that mean if Ax equals zero has the only trivial solution? This only happens when the columns of A are linearly independent. And we learned that a few videos ago, so if you forgot that theorem, refresh yourself. If Ax equals zero is only the trivial solution, then the columns are linearly independent. So we have now proven both of these. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll answer them as quickly as I can. If this video helped you, please share it with your friends because it might help them.